And it is Denver Sports tonight on this Thursday night in the Mile High City. He's Marcello Romano. I'm Will Peterson. We will roll with you for the next hour. Big news coming out uh, literally in the last 45 minutes is that Nikola Jokic is once again going alone to the NBA All-Star game. Jamal Murray not named an All-Star reserve in the Western Conference. Cello, I've got a stat for you. Nikola Jokic has 420 career wins, including the playoffs, and has never had a teammate go to the All-Star game. That's the most wins without without an All-Star teammate in NBA history. Makes what the Joker's doing all that much more remarkable and a little frustrating. The Nuggets won the title last year and still only have one All-Star. Uh, especially for him, for Jamal Murray, who, they, like, I mean, that guy, you, you would think that he's, especially after the run to the postseason to the championship last year, that more people be aware of him. And I know he missed some time earlier in the year, and that's probably what's holding him out of it. But who got selected in front of him? I don't have the list right in front of me, but, I, th- I mean, that's that's what I would be looking for as some guys just have the name, they get in on name alone. Well, I'm glad you asked because I've got the West Reserves here that made it over Jamal Murray. Those names, I'm going to give you the full list. We'll look at the guards in particular. Kawhi Leonard, Anthony Davis, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Stephen Curry, Paul George, and Carl Anthony Towns are the all-stars instead of Jamal Murray. If you want to look specifically at the guards, your mind goes to Steph Curry and Devin Booker, to some extent Anthony Edwards as well. So you're right. Those are quote-unquote more household names, particularly Steph, but at the same time, Jamal Murray beat Devin Booker in a playoff series last year. Jamal Murray won the title last year. Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic both had triple doubles together down in Miami. Uh, this year, he's still having a great year. He's missed those those 14 games you're talking about, but he's averaging 21.2 points, 6.4 assists, nearly four rebounds, a steal and a block a night. I mean, come on, man. Like, ugh, I don't know why I'm more fired up about this than I probably should be, but if we're going to say that some of this— Who are you going to remove to put him in? Okay, real quick. If we're going to say that some of this is like— not legacy at this point, but sort of what have you done, body of work. What he did in the playoffs last year deserved him an all-star spot this year. That's what I'm frustrated about. Now, in a perfect world, who would I remove is Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, come on. Cat, an all-star? He's a fine player. He's not an all-star. Now, that gets tricky because he's a, a big man versus a guard type thing. Yeah. But I think that's probably how most people look at it, Will, is it's going to be position, per, uh, provision, position for position, right? I mean, like you can't. Booker's having a phenomenal year. Just even, geez, even his last couple weeks have been just out of this world. Steph is Steph. He's gonna get, he's gonna get in just on name recognition alone. Yeah, that's a that's a legacy selection for sure. I mean, the Warriors stink. And who was the? Th- did you say Kawhi Leonard? Kawhi and then Anthony Edwards, sort of tweener guys. Well, you're not gonna get Ant Man's becoming a superstar. He is, but do the Timberwolves deserve more All Stars than the Nuggets? Well, they're in first place, are they not? Nuggets have been in first place a lot the last few years. I read you the stat. Nicole yeah, Jokic has if, never had an all-star teammate. So now we're moving the goalposts. I'm not saying you are. I'm saying that no, the selection No, but what I'm is. saying is a first place for the Denver Nuggets is different than first place for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Who's the leader of that team? If you polled most people that are NBA fans, it's going to be Ant-Man, right? It's yeah. not It's not Cat. When he's not swinging chairs at Ball Arena and getting tickets. Yeah, but otherwise, that's going to be the guy. He's the leader of that ship. I just, okay, Minnesota's having a good year, right? But if we apply the, oh, well, they're in first place, they deserve two All-Stars, that logic never got applied to the Nuggets the last few years. No, it hasn't. So it's just kind of ridiculous that you win a title, and now I have to tell you that Nikola Jokic has won 420 games and has never gone to an All-Star game with a teammate. It just feels a little ridiculous. And to punish Jamal for missing 12 games in November, come on, that's stupid. Let's talk about what he did in June. And then then people are going to come at me on the text line, well, it's for this year. Well, no, it's not because Steph's an all-star. He's having a fine year. But, again, the Warriors stink. It's it's a body of work to me, and I just think the Nuggets continue to get disrespected, and I think they've been disrespected tonight with this news. Mm, Well, and I think a lot of it is, like, your point, you keep going back to what they did last year, and that's going to be the defense for most people of, well, what have you done this year? And he's had a very good year this year, but if you laid it out, this is where I think our perception of our squad here being local, having that local bias, is different than what people see it around the NBA. And we had this discussion a couple weeks ago, which you didn't like, is that will Nikola Jokic ever become 
the one who receives the most votes to get into the NBA All-Star game. Yeah, he was behind LeBron James once again this year. And I told you, I don't think so just because of what I know of an NBA fan. This kind of seems like it's similar to me as far as like the way that they that people look at things and people outside of Denver look at things. They're not thinking about the run in June last year. They're looking at only this year. And to be honest with you, it's a lot of times it's like who's got the big name, who's the superstar. And if you if just to be honest with you, if you put it up, well, of who's a superstar and who isn't, it's Anthony Edwards or Jamal Murray. Which one are you going with? The Same guy thing, who the guy who has the ring. Take yourself outside the of the guy Denver. who had a triple double in the NBA finals. I don't know about that. <sighs> I'm just trying to speak like I, I logically know, I know as you're to playing why. De- I know you're playing devil's advocate here. I know you are. But it just it and the whole position thing. Basketball is positionless, anyways, and particularly an All Star game is positionless. If you want to add a fourth guard over a fourth big man, you should do it, and you should put Jamal Murray in the All Star game over Carl Anthony Towns. Agreed, but it's it's the excuse of convenience, right? When they say why wasn't he an All Star, that's what the the excuse will be. Well, we already had a few guards, we already had a few small guys. That's why we we kept him out and we went with Cat. The final score of that game is like 196 to 192. I, I, think they it, play, I think they play like quarters now. I, I, I don't even it. know the format. I'd love for him to be an all-star. I think he is an all-star. I'm just trying to paint the picture as to why he's not. And for him to get to that level, it's going to take – he's going to have to push it to another level, I think, Well, for him to get that kind of con- consideration. Because a lot of people will think, oh, it's the Nuggets and Jokic leads that crew and he has a great supporting cast and Jamal Murray's part of that. And we both know he's way more than just a supporting guy. I mean, that two-man game does not work without him here. No, Jamal Murray would have won Western Conference Finals MVP last year if Nikola Jokic wasn't all-worldly. Jamal Murray would have won NBA Finals MVP if Nikola Jokic wasn't all-worldly. Like, this is a guy who had the resume to win one of the top honors in the sport, and now the people who select the reserves to that are telling me, ah, that Carl Anthony Towns guy, he's in first. He's better. The sad thing is, is the 12 games he did miss – or what's keeping him out of it. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. I mean, like, for him to get in next year even, even if, say say they go and win back-to-back, he's going to have to stay relatively healthy. He's going to have to – he could maybe miss five before the All-Star game for him to get that that nod. All right, you can read about it at denversports.com. Jamal Murray snubbed from the All-Star game. Jokic goes alone again. Speaking of the NBA, there was big news today. Involving the Sixers, but really, let's be honest, Cello, it involved the Denver Nuggets. The league has fined – the Sixers organization, 75 grand for violating injury reporting regarding Joel Embiid's absence Saturday Weird. versus Denver, but no violation of player participation policy due to Embiid's confirmed injury. So they're saying the injury was not a ruse. They're just fi- finding the organization for their inability to put him on the injury report. Obviously, we've rehashed it. He was scratched 10 minutes before the game. The whole situation was ridiculous. What do you make of this news today about the NBA coming down on the Sixers with, you know, 75 grand? That's about <laughs> I'm not quite sure how you can have both. It's about 5 bucks to the rest of us, but anyways, 75 grand and they're saying, "Oh, it's not because he wasn't injured, it was because it wasn't reported." So what you're what you're basically saying is whatever happened happened during warm-ups. Yes. And they're fine with that. That the injury is legitimate, but it happened while he was warming up in Ball Arena when I watched him and he looked completely fine. That's interesting because you did have eyes in the arena that day. You were there that day. But, yes, I agree with you. The wording is interesting because it sounds like the Sixers got in some trouble, but per not, perhaps not the maximum amount of trouble. They failed to put Embiid on the report, but, again, the knee injury was deemed legitimate. Put it this way, Cello. I think if he doesn't get landed on by Kaminga and Golden State and limp off, and now we're hearing in the last hour he's got a meniscus deal that's going to keep him out a little bit of time, that almost bailed the NBA out, right? Because this happened Saturday. Yep. This news didn't come out till Thursday. They clearly sat on this for a little bit, and then all of a sudden on Tuesday night on national TV, there's Joel Embiid flailing in pain, getting taken off the court, and they're going, oh, see? See, that knee injury was legitimate this whole time. (laughs) I don't think it was. I think he dodged Nikola Jokic. I've, I've maintained that from the start. Yeah. But the league today just says, oh, no, no, no. All you did wrong was not put him on the report, but we understand he was really hurt. I find that I find that bogus and, and convenient. 
for that to have happened because I, I, I agree with you now. I didn't believe it was going to happen going into it, Will. In fact, I thought for him to win the MVP, he had to play in that game. And as a competitor, you would want your guy to be there, whether you kind of banged up or not. I mean, Nikola, Nikola Jokic played in that game. He was still suffering from that same back injury that kept him out last night. Yep. He was also still dealing with the eye injury that he suffered in New York a few nights prior. Did you see the pupil picture, by the way? Yeah, it was disgusting, man. It was scary. I mean, one of his pupils was the size of his entire eye, more or less. A lot of medical experts on Twitter, I know, but the speculation was he's getting some sort of drop treatment that made the pupil look like that. But, yeah, if, if Joel Embiid got poked in the eye, he'd miss a month. Oh, good. It Jokic be played the next same night. Same injuries, it would be ridiculous. But now, like you said, I think it's convenient of what happened the other night. He was out there. He was playing. What was he in there for 30 minutes? Joel that, Embiid against, yeah, bef yeah, he before played, he got fell on. Yeah, he had terrible stats. I mean, you know, he, he had like 14 points, seven boards, and eight turnovers. The Warriors now 0-3 since he ducked Jokic. Got to be a little careful on that stuff. We have stuff an update on odds. We're never rooting for an injury. I'm glad you asked about that. Zach Bai has hammered this the last few days, and he's spot on, man. He's been taken off the board at a lot of books. Wow. They have flat out removed him. I'm looking at one right now where he is not even an option. He fell all the way to 15 to 1 before they just pulled the plug with this latest injury. Joe LMB, because we've always said Vegas knows, right? Vegas yeah, always yeah, knows. Yeah. Joe LMB is not going to win the NBA MVP, and the domino, the butterfly effect, whatever you want to call it, was him dodging Nikola Jokic at Ball Arena on Saturday. That literally tanked his chances of winning the MVP. I think voters were that outraged by the shenanigans that went on, how poorly really the Sixers handled it, and today they get fined seventy five grand. and Joel Embiid will not be the 2023-2024 NBA MVP. Well, and how long is he supposed to be out now? Because what, what, what do you have left, five games? Yeah, but he's missing the to night, be... so he's going to go down to four after tonight. And they say if it's going to be an extended amount of time, he's missing the games that were that are required for him to be. Here, here's Woj in the last hour. Uh, Joe Embiid has an injured lateral meniscus in his left knee and will be out through the weekend while a treatment plan is finalized, sources tell ESPN. So Woj is only ruling him out for the next three, four, five days. So it's not like we're getting the Woj bomb, Joe Embiid's out six weeks or anything like that, which would disqualify him from the award because if you're new to the NBA's brand new policies you have to play 65 games to qualify for postseason awards but as of now Woj is just saying eh, he's gonna miss probably two three games and then we'll go from there listen man I know that medical advancements have been crazy over the past few well pro probably decades right yeah but for this to be labeled as what it is which is lateral meniscus injury you would think it would require more than three to four to five days yeah, it's a weird timeline to just say, hey, we're going to rule him out through the weekend. Like, you can't put any more definitive on that. I'm with you. This feels like we should be seeing the tweets. Joel Embiid's out three weeks or four weeks, well, and yeah. then we'll reevaluate. I mean, if you're going to label that, I mean, that's a top line on most of these sites, Will. It's like, hey, this sounds it sounds a lot more serious than it is, and it's almost like they're they're placating the, fan, uh, the, the NBA fans, like that it's more serious than it is when it's something like, dude, my knee's swollen. Give me a few days to rest and ice, and I'll be all right. All right, so let's get into the Nuggets game last night. A disappointing finish in Oklahoma City. I mean, Michael Malone said as much after the game, you got to be able to go get a rebound. And unfortunately, Michael Porter Jr., he didn't name him by name, but Michael Porter Jr. had a really bad defensive possession in the final moments. The Thunder got two offensive rebounds, eventually scored, and that was the ball game. Nuggets go on to lose by five if they get the ball back. They're taking the final shot to either tie it or send it to overtime. Two ways to look at this, Jell. One, you didn't have Jokic, and you took a contender to the buzzer. Good job. But other, damn, they really let a good opportunity slip away. Particularly, that might mean now they play game seven on the road. If they tie with OKC, the Thunder won the tiebreaker last night. They've won three of four games. So you more glass half full or glass half empty on that result last night out in Oklahoma? I'm feeling more like they let one slip away especially with how they started the game. They came out on fire. They built up a big lead, and by halftime, that had been completely erased. Um, there's a couple things. When you brought up Michael Porter Jr., for me, until he can hit a wide-open three, I think – and you and I talked about this last night with KJ in here. Is like That's the part that's missing is like he can make contested shots. He can make the shots where it's like I have nothing else to do but go up and shoot it. 
the ones that are killing him, it's like every time you turn on a Nuggets game or watch the Nuggets play, you're watching him get a feed wide open. Correct. He gets and a lot of open shots. Those can be daggers. A lot of the time, especially late in games, and those are the shots that he's just not making. Uh, I think early in the game, defensively, he was a part of it, man. I mean, there was a there was a drive early in that game last night, Will, where Christian Brown drove the lane, laid it up, and Michael Porter Jr. defensively was about to steal an inbound pass. Like, the focus seemed like it was there. Sometimes, to me, it, I think it's almost like he's trying to do – too many steps at once. You know when he loses his dribble sometimes when he gets inside like he's so I got to get I got to get this dribble that dribble then I got to get a shot up and almost every time he fumbles the ball or it gets stolen. Yeah, it's not the smoothest process in the world at times. No, it's like there's herky jerky. There's something where he's still missing like just that smooth nature of his game. A lot of, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not even close where I think it'll take him to another level when he gets to that point where it never feels like he's forcing it, never feels like he's rushed. He's just playing within himself. Here was the sequence last night. Nuggets up 98-97 after Jamal makes a couple free throws. Shot clock running down for the Thunder. Dortz drives to the basket, misses a layup. Aaron Wiggins offensive board. Josh Giddy a couple seconds later, misses a jumper. Josh Giddy gets his own rebound. That's the one Porter had to have. And then what do you know? Josh Giddy kicks it out to Chet Holmgren. Buries a deep three-pointer. Thunder up four, 20 seconds left. Ball game. You're talking about daggers. That was a dagger from Holmgren last night. It just feels like with Porter that when Jokic is out there, Porter can be a really nice complimentary piece. But when Jokic isn't out there, he can't create his own shot. You talked about the issues with the dribbling. And he's six foot, what, 10, 11? Yeah. He's got to have more of a will to go get rebounds, particularly in crunch time. And Michael Malone, when he got asked after the game, what did he learn? He said, I learned we won't win if we don't rebound. So, again, he's not naming Porter, but Porter got a brain. He knows who he's talking about. He's got to go get that board. It's a moot point, knock on wood, because they're going to have Jokic 98% of the time. But those times when they don't, it feels like Porter has the ability, or the, not the ability, the opportunity to prove he's a star in this league because he's getting paid like a star. He's a max contract guy, yeah. yet he doesn't step up to the plate. Yeah, but I think you're also kind of treading on thin ice when he's kind of always your scapegoat. And it was that way last year all the way to their championship run. Um, and I think even his his play in the finals was like he finally realized, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to help with shooting. I got I to gotta help other ways. Well, he couldn't throw a beach ball in the ocean. No. I mean, his shooting in the finals was was hard to watch. But if, if you're him and you say, I know who you're talking about, I mean, how many times do you have to hear that as a player before you're like finally like, am I the only one that you're going to go out and throw under the bus? But Cello, 30 seconds left, down one, you've got to get the oh, freaking I get that. rebound. I get that. I, I totally understand that. I'm saying when does it when does it get to the point where he gets shut off because he's the only one who he, – he, he seems to be getting singled out a lot. I would agree. But out of that starting five, he's by far the easiest to single out. You never hear anyone criticize Aaron Gordon or KCP no, no, or no. Jamal or Nicola. I mean, he's, he's the one who's getting paid the max money – and not playing like a max player, and he's still got four more years on this deal. I mean, do the Nuggets really want to pay this guy close to $40 million each of the next He'd three seasons? I, he, he would be one I, I would fear to let go and then see him blossom somewhere else. He's been in the league a while. We're not talking about a, we're not talking about a rookie or a second-year player. I know, but he's also behind how many people on that, on that starting five. He's the third option. Right, but as I'm pointing out, he had his chance last night and he no, failed. No, 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 and I agree with you. Last night, here's the, I guess, the more frustrating part for me. When you go look at that box score, who was the leading scorer? I don't know off the top of my well, head. Dude, I there was like five Jamal of them. Murray. No, the, five of them were tied with like 16 points. Okay. I think Aaron Gordon had 16. Jamal had 16. Um, and Reggie, I'm looking now, Reggie Jackson had 16 as well. Exactly. At one point or another, who are you going to have to take over that that torch and say, I'll be the guy tonight. Because last night they played a pretty competitive game and they were all being very equal with, with how they were contributing to that game. But you, at, if you want to win that game on the road and they're not missing anybody really, I mean, they, I guess they're missing Jalen Williams, right? But like, if you're going to be, that's when you want one of those guys to be like, I'm going to have a career night tonight. I'm going to go off. I want to see Jamal go for 33 points or 
Michael Michael Porter Jr., the way that he started the game and the way they were shooting the three ball early, the way they finished, it was it was lackluster. But I agree with you. If you it's half empty because they blew an opportunity last night. But if you have your best player and you're playing them on the road, and that's how close it was without him. I mean, postseason plays different, but I would tend to go with the Nuggets being able to get overcome the Thunder. There. Right, and that's a young Oklahoma City team that's going to have some playoff growing pains. They're not going to win a title this year. They're going to have to get their heart broken a little bit, just like the Nuggets did before they figure it out. So either Murray or Jokic made a comment similar to that last year of, we had to learn how to lose before we could figure out how to win. But I'll just ask it because it's kind of the elephant in the room. Is Michael Porter Jr. a nugget for the remainder of this contract? Yes or no? Because I believe if they had lost last year, Malone was not going to get fired. You were obviously never trading Jokic or Murray. But if they had come up short again last year, I think you mentioned the word scapegoat. I think Porter would have been traded this summer. I think it's hard to trade Porter last summer when you just came off a title. Of course you're not going to trade him. You lost Bruce Brown. But I think Calvin Booth and Josh Kroenke, if they don't win a title this year, are probably looking at that number and going, we could spend that money better elsewhere. I don't think Michael Porter Jr. finishes this contract through the 2027 season in Denver. I just don't. I think ultimately it'll come down to the success of the team. Like you said, if they go on and they, they win back-to-back. Then he's not getting traded, of course. No. I'm living in the hypothetical that they don't defend the title. But even if they were to do that and then fall short the next year after that, he's probably on the trade block there. I think you're going to have to see some substantial growth from him as as a player where it's not so hot and cold, it's not so up and down for him to finish out the contract here. I'd love to see it happen because I think he's a he's a great piece to have on this squad. It's just the inconsistencies that we see and you bring up the money, which is fair. If you're a max player, those kind of levels and even Jamal Murray gets he gets knocked for this as well. Some nights he's up and some nights he, there's not it's not a super, and he's become way more consistent than he was before. Michael Michael Porter Jr.'s got to get to that point. Yeah, I, I, I get you on that. And to only have your leading scorer score 16 points last night is disappointing because it's it just didn't feel like anyone wanted to be the guy when Nikola, I don't even, I mean, I didn't see him on the bench. I don't think Nikola ever got on that plane to OKC last night. I think he probably stayed behind for treatment. Other takeaways from that loss last night that I just wanted to point out real quick, too, you mentioned it, but they got off to a hot start and then kind of let the lead evaporate. And I didn't expect them to win wire to wire in OKC. But this bench is still an issue, Cello. Because even when you're missing yeah. Jokic, four of your five starters were out there last night, played you know the majority of the minutes, all 30-plus minutes, 35-plus minutes. But that trade deadline is creeping. That trade deadline's next week. I don't think people realize that, how quickly the NBA trade deadline is coming up on us. Next week. How busy are you working the phones if you're Calvin Booth over the next 48, 72, 96 hours? Wow, I don't think that I even quite realized that that's already happening. What the NHL NHL All Star Game is this weekend, right? Correct. And before you know it, like, what? When's the date? When's what's the drop dead date? It's February eighth. It's a week from today at, at three Eastern, so wow. one o'clock. So when we do this show in literally seven days, we'll know whether or not the Nuggets made a move. A move will be made. It has to. Right? Big, small. Because, like, last year they did the whole get rid of Bones Highland thing because he didn't want to get on board. They got Thomas Bryant. He couldn't play. They got Reggie Jackson, who's been great this year, but for whatever reason didn't mesh last year. I mean, they didn't, they didn't do anything at the trade deadline that helped them win a title other than the fact they subtracted Bones and his bad attitude. So maybe I guess, that helped. I guess, I mean, the only, one, like, the only one that had been rumored even within the last month is what, Jordan Clarkson? I've heard some Gordon Hayward chatter, too. See, I just don't know, like, and then what are you giving up for it? Well, for Clarkson or Hayward, I, I would expect teams would want Christian Brown, and you could probably tell them no, but they'd they'd want Julian Strother. They'd want Peyton Watson. I mean, you're not just giving up Zeke Naji to get these guys. You would have no, to no, give, no, that's would, why I'm asking. You would Who have you to think? give up a, a player that fans know their name. I don't know if I do it then. I don't want to part with Brown. Listen, I man, I, I love I know. his motor. And Christian Brown has had – he's kind of struggled a little bit this year, especially coming off of what he did even the postseason last year. 
But I don't know. I'm with you. I don't know that I want to get rid of that piece. No. Because he's been there. He's done it. He know what it, he knows what it's like to play in an NBA Finals. He knows how to give you quality minutes when it matters the most. He won a national championship and then immediately won an NBA title. The guy's a winner. It would and, have then he, to be. and then he cut his hand at the parade. You had a great picture of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, they post on social media all the time. Because yeah. you sent it to me, and I said, can I tweet that? And I did, and it went viral. And now Christian and Peyton Watson post that on their story all the time. I'm like, you guys stole that from <laughs> Cello and I. I'm glad yeah. you did. But, yeah, no, it's pretty funny. I mean, the name would have to be pretty substantial for me then at that point. I would tend to agree.